Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today is December 6th and the sixth day of Vlogmas. Vlogmas is a holiday event where YouTube creators such as myself post a video every day in December leading up to Christmas. Today we're going to make Christmas cards using bits of yarn and paper. Just a quick note before we get started. Today, I'm wearing a Jiffy dress, Simplicity 6082. The link to the video with that dress is right here at the top of the screen. I found this idea in my McCall's Needlework and Craft Annual, Volume 2, that was published in 1951. You may remember this annual from my McCall's Craft, Decorating Easter Eggs video. The link to the video with that craft is right here at the top of the screen. For all those thrifters and sewing collectors, I bought this McCall's Needlework and Craft Annual for $2 at Good Value Thrift Store in London, Ontario. While in this store, I found an additional two McCall's Needlework and Craft Annuals from 1950 and 1952, as well as 22 McCall Needlework and Craft Magazines from the 1950s through the 1970s. I found this craft on page 95 of the annual. It says, everyone appreciates receiving a Christmas card made especially for them. However, a handmade card should express the personality of its creator, as well as convey best wishes for the season. If you are a stitcher or a knitter who has no yen to paint, what could be more appropriate than to make your own cards with bits of yarn from your sewing basket. The McCall's Annual's instructions to this craft said, These fascinating Christmas cards are made from bits of yarn and paper. Trace the actual size drawings found on these two pages and assemble according to the instructions below. Use colored construction paper for the cards. The McCall's Annual's list of materials included colored construction paper measuring 9 by 12 inches, tracing paper, scraps of Shetland floss, Germantown and cruel wool, a tapestry needle, and paste. Since I didn't have all these materials, I improvised. The general instructions for this craft were Fold 12 inch length of construction paper in half, then 9 inch width, making a folder 4.5 by 6 inches. Trace a design and transfer to the front of the card. Open card and with tapestry needle punch holes for stitches. To embroider, back work with a separate piece of construction paper for support. To end yarn, sew ends through a stitch in the back. My first step was to trace the designs with a pencil onto tracing paper, or in my case, pieces of tissue paper from sewing patterns that I cut out previously. I saved the really big pieces of tissue paper for tracing, but also for pattern alterations such as lengthening pants and skirts, as well as drawing sleeves. After I had traced the pattern, I went over my pencil lines with a red Sharpie to make them clear for when I transferred them over to the construction paper. The other reason to go over the lines with a marker was that I don't have to worry about the pencil lines fading when I use these templates next year. The first
first card I made was the one with the two Christmas bells that rang out glad tidings. My first step was to fold my blue construction paper in half. Then I folded it in half again, making what looked like a little book. My construction paper was 8 by 10 inches, so my cards were a bit smaller than the McCall's annuals, but the designs worked out perfectly. Then I centered my tissue paper design on the front of the card and traced the red sharpie lines with my pencil pressing firmly into the card. Don't press too hard or you may rip the tracing paper, but firm enough to make an indentation in the construction paper so you can see the design. Then I opened my card so that it was the full 8 by 10 inch size. From the back of the card, I poked my needle through to the front along the top of the first line of the bell. I started at one side of the bell and worked my way across to the other side. The annual's instruction said, Blue card, Bay Shetland covering each line with a single stitch for top bell, running stitch for lower bell, red bow and clapper. Since I didn't have any beige Shetland floss or any Shetland at all, I used embroidery floss instead. I chose a beautiful marigold color that complemented the blue construction paper. My mom gave me two Ziploc bags full of embroidery floss so that I could start embroidering again. Be careful not to pull too hard on your Shetland or embroidery floss because it may tear the card. If you think you may pull too hard or if your construction paper feels too thin, then use a separate piece of construction paper on the back for support. Once I had stitched the first bell, I used a running stitch to outline the second bell. Then I used red embroidery floss for the bow and the outline of the bell clapper. The red and marigold embroidery floss looked fantastic with the blue construction paper. My last step was to refold the card along the fold lines. The back of the front of the card was hidden so that the threads and knots were not visible. It looked so professional. Stay tuned to the end of this video to see the reveal of all the Christmas cards. The second card I made was the majestic yarn tree that predicted good times ahead. My first step was to fold my red construction paper in half. Then I folded it in half again. Then I centered my tissue paper design on the front of the card and traced the red sharpie lines with my pencil, pressing firmly into the card. The instructions for this card were red card, green Shetland, use double for tree, white French knots. Starting at the top of the tree, bring the thread from the back of the card and make a loop long enough to reach the holes in the next row. Return the needle to the same hole 
being sure to catch the under thread of the loop directly below. Use white for the tree base. I had to think about this for a bit, how to make the loop and bring it back through the same hole with my green yarn. Instead of using green Shetland, I used forest green yarn that I bought at Value Village in a big bag of green yarns. This yarn is bigger than Shetland floss, so I wasn't able to bring the thread back through the same hole. When I tried this, it made a big hole in the card. This is one of the cards where I would recommend using a separate piece of construction paper on the back for support. I was able to cover up the hole with the big loops of yarn so it couldn't be seen. If you do make a hole, it's very easy to cover it up with the loopy yarn and the back of the front of the card is covered when it's refolded. Instead of white Shetland, I used white yarn. It was a small ball from a bag of leftover yarn that my mother-in-law gave me. To make a French knot, bring the needle up through the back of the card. Coil the yarn around the needle and insert the needle back through the front of the card as close to the original hole as possible. For a large knot, coil the yarn around the needle two or three times. I wrap the yarn around my needle twice to make a bigger snowflake. Then I used the white yarn for the base of the Christmas tree. I covered each line of the base with a single stitch. I worked my way around the card, making some snowflakes on one side, then moving on to the base of the tree, and then on to the other side of the card, making more French knot snowflakes. This reduced the number of thread cuts and knots on the back of the card. My last step was to refold the card, hiding the wrong side of all the stitching details. This card was a lot of fun to make, so I hope you enjoy the finished card at the end of this video. The next card I made was the leaf banked candle that radiated a bright Christmas message. My first step was to fold my green construction paper in half. Then I folded it in half again. Then I cut out a flame from the red construction paper. Next, I traced the candle on white paper and cut it out. I didn't have any white construction paper, so I used white printer paper instead. The instructions were green card, trace design on three and three quarter by five inch gray paper, paste on front of card. Use yellow cruel wool in straight stitches for the light. Candle and leaves are white paper, flame red, paste. Then I moved on to the leaves. I traced the first leaf and then cut it out. After that, I just cut out similar leaf shapes instead of tracing. I cut out 15 leaves in total, the same number as in the drawing. The shapes of the leaves were not identical to the drawing, 
but it still gave the same effect. I used a glue stick for this project rather than white glue because the glue stick was easier to manage with all the little pieces of the card. I didn't use the gray paper for my card because I didn't use the gray paper for my card. Instead, I traced the design onto the front of my green card because I didn't like the idea of all that gray. I thought it would look dreary and I was looking for cheery and bright. Then I glued the white candle onto the green construction paper. The red flame was next. After that, it was time for the leaves. I didn't trace the design of the leaves onto the card. Instead, I glued them in a pattern similar to the original drawing. You don't have to perfectly match the card. Arrange the leaves how you like and make the card your original design. My next step was to add the candlelight lines. I placed my tissue paper template over the card and traced the lines around the candle flame. For the light lines, I chose the same marigold embroidery floss that I used on my Belle's Christmas card. It was such a pretty color that I just couldn't resist. I threaded my needle and knotted off the end. Then I opened up my card and poked the needle up through the back of the card, starting at one end of the light line. Then on the front of the card, I pushed the needle back through the other end of the light line. My last step was to refold the card. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see the reveal of all the Christmas cards. Before I continue with the Christmas cards, please like and share this video with your friends and family. I would love to help others sew and refashion on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasure that I find at thrift shops. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now, back to the Christmas cards. The next card I made was the seasonal pine cone spray that lent a holiday air. My first step was to fold my brown construction paper in half. Then I folded it in half again. Then I centered my tissue paper design on the front of the card and traced the red sharpie lines with my pencil, pressing firmly into the card. The annual's instructions were Tan card, green Shetland for pine needles, highlighted with white cruel for double lines, red for cone, white accents. Then I opened the card and with my embroidery needle, I punched holes for the stitches. This made it so much easier to see where to poke my needle through. This was recommended in the instructions earlier, but this was the first card that I gave it a try. Then I used my red embroidery floss 
to outline the pine cone. I poked my needle up through the back of the card, starting at one of the pre-punched holes of the pine cone. Then on the front of the card, I pushed the needle back through the other hole at the end of the line of the pine cone. This card is a lot easier than it looks. The best way to complete this card is to follow the straight lines all the way across the pine cone rather than trying to do sections of it. Work your way back and forth across the pine cone. Then I used my green embroidery floss for the pine needles. I covered each pine needle with a single stitch. I pushed my needle up through the back of the card, starting at one end of the pine needle, and then on the front of the card, I pushed the needle back through at the other end of the pine needle. I love this green embroidery floss. I've been using a lot of green in my embroidery, I embroidered a scotch thistle on my green knitting bag that I bought from Dollarama, a Canadian dollar store. I used a pencil to draw a copy of the design from my mom's Anchor Embroidery Designs book. I also used a lot of green on my two pillowcases that I've been embroidering. One pillowcase is complete and the other one is half done. This design with the winding green vine is from my elegant medieval iron-on transfer pattern book by Marty Noble that I bought off Amazon.ca. Then I used my white embroidery floss for the snow that fell upon the pine cone and needles. I mirrored each pine needle with a single stitch of white for snow. I poked my needle up through the back of the card, starting just above one end of the pine needle and then on the front of the card, I push the needle back through just above the other end of the pine needle. This made it look like snow was lying on top of the pine needles. My last step was to refold the card. Stay tuned to the end of this video to see the reveal of all the Christmas cards. The next card I made was the one with the pixie cherub as it tiptoed across a pink cloud. My first step was to fold my blue construction paper in half. Then I folded it in half again. Next, I traced my cherub onto white printer paper. Then I cut it out. I tried to make the lines curve as nicely as possible. The annual's instructions were, blue card, trace the cherub on white paper, candle on red, flame on yellow, cut two wings, paste. Embroider hair in outline stitch with fine yellow wool, pink for clouds. Use Shetland blue floss for stars, Noel, and to make a French knot eye. Then I trace the wings separately from the cherub and then cut them out. I centered my cherub on the card according to the tissue paper template and used my glue stick to tack it to the blue card. I made sure to glue down the entire cherub, including the arms and legs. I didn't want it peeling off the card. Then I glued down the wings.
Then I centered my tissue paper design over the front of the card, lining up the cherub. I traced the red sharpie lines of the word Noel, the pink cloud, and the snowflakes with my pencil, pressing firmly into the card. I used my pencil to mark the eye of the cherub where I will use blue embroidery floss for a French knot. I also drew the ear, belly button, and chin line of the cherub and then went over my pencil line with a black pen. I cut out a red candle from my construction paper and glued it on the card in the cherub's hand. Then I cut out a yellow flame for the candle from my construction paper and glued it to the card too. Then I opened my card and poked my needle through the front of the card where I wanted the cherub's eye to be. I only made the hole. Then I poked my needle with blue embroidery floss up through the back of the card where I just made the hole. Then I made a French knot for the cherub's eye. My next step was to embroider the words Noel and the scattered snowflakes with my blue embroidery floss. I poked my needle up through the back of the card and started with the L in Noel. I used pale yellow embroidery floss to outline stitch the hair of the cherub because he's an angelic blonde. These cards were so fun to make and they're so pretty. I'm looking forward to seeing the faces of the people who I send these cards to. Then I used my pink embroidery floss to outline stitch the clouds. My final step was to refold the card. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see the reveal of all the Christmas cards. The last card I made was the fluffy bear that sent its greetings. My first step was to fold my red construction paper in half. Then I folded it in half again. Then I centered my tissue paper design on the front of the card and traced the red sharpie lines with my pencil pressing firmly into the card. Then I opened up the card and poked my needle with white yarn up through the back. I made a short loop as I pushed the needle back through the front of the card through another hole right beside the original hole. The annual's instructions for this card said, Gray card. Fill in bear design with short loops of white Shetland wool. Use black straight stitches on the foot pads and French knots for the eyes and nose. Red bow and high. I chose to use a red card instead of grey because red is one of the colours of Christmas and I felt that a grey card was not quite festive enough. This is another one of the cards where I would recommend using a separate piece of construction paper on the back for support. I made a big hole again, but I was able to cover it up with the loops of yarn so it could not be seen. 
If you make a hole, it's very easy to cover it up with a loopy yarn, and the back of the front of the card is covered when it's refolded. Instead of using white Shetland wool for the bear, I used the same white yarn that I used for the snowflakes on the majestic holiday tree card. Then I used some light brown yarn for the words hi across the top of the card. The instructions recommended hi in red yarn on a grey card, but I chose high in brown yarn on a red card. Instead of red wool for the bow, I used pink. This yarn was another leftover in the same bag of yarn from my mother-in-law as a white yarn. To make a bow, I cut a piece of yarn and threaded one end of it through one of the loops on the bear's chest. Then I evened up the ends of the yarn and tied it in a bow, securing it to the card. Then on the front of the card, I poked holes where I wanted the eyes and nose. Then I used some light brown yarn to make three French knots for the eyes and nose of the bear. Next I used dark brown yarn instead of black wool as recommended for the foot pads of the bear. I followed the instructions and used a straight stitch for this step. This is where I made a big hole in the card with the brown yarn. I wasn't worried though, I knew that the thick yarn would cover it up nicely. My final step was to refold the card. Here are the finished cards! making Christmas cards with me. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. I love sharing my new, vintage, and out of print sewing patterns and my tips, tricks, quick fixes, and even my mistakes when sewing along with you. I also love sharing my wonderful fabric finds that I thrifted from charity shops as well as brand new fabric online and in store. 
If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and press the bell so you receive a notification when I release a new video. If you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.